So it feels like I've turned an old polytunnel that was at its end of life into a new polytunnel. And I do feel great about that. Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday morning and um, I recorded a little piece on Friday night as I was walking around and I just, I, I was taken by the weather. It feels like spring and it's, you know, it's warming up and it's about half past nine in the morning and it's a little bit chilly but it's certainly warm it's warm enough and uh, it's going to get lovely and warm today it's going to be a lovely day as i was walking around on friday i uh, filmed a few little bits those of you who watched my last video will know and it was uh, a basically an outpouring of all the things that i want to get done uh, and i was talking about tomorrow then which was yesterday saturday are you staying with me <laughs> anyway saturday has come and gone and i've achieved nothing off that list i did get a lot done but my whole day was taken up with I had to go and collect our tractor our ride on mower I had to go and collect some shelving units from free cycle so that I found on free cycle someone that was giving them away for my new storage unit which I'll show you guys later and I had to go and collect pig waste bins from fruit and veg shops I ended up just running all around the place I did manage to grass seed all of our paddocks so that's a good job that I got done yesterday. But other than that, not a lot. This was the next one on my list. As I spoke on Friday, this is the one I wanted to get done. So this is what we're gonna do now. Now, I've had this polytunnel for nearly three years and it was very, very cheap, really affordable. And I do recommend them. And I've seen it go through all its stages of life now, I think, after three years. The framework is still solid it's still there's no rust on it or almost no rust on it it looks great it's really really good so i can't see any reason why that's not going to last for several more years but the cover is pretty much at end of life so you're going to get at most three seasons if you use it a lot like we do now one of the main things that's gone is the zip and i've thought about trying to just reattach the zip but it's just not going to work there's no purchase there we're going to end up just ripping this so what we're going to do is basically form a new door so that's what we're going to do right now we're going to use these first of all to make two new uprights there and then we're going to fix these to them the cheeks have another one across the top fix that to it cut this off and then make a new door out of some bits of batten and this is all just reclaimed timber that i've got either that I found we had an old, um, there was an old fruit cage on the property that was in the wrong place, wasn't serving a purpose. We took that down when we first got here and we salvaged all the timber. And these are just odd lengths of timber that I got on free cycle. This would have been, I think, go, it would, you'd use the, it's, it's the top of a handrail, but I think you'd use this outside on some decking. Um, so this is all just reclaimed timber. Apart from a few screws, there's nothing I can think of right now that I'm gonna be using that I've paid for. So. Um, we're gonna be able to extend the life of this cover by some distance, just by taking out the, the weak points, which are the zips predominantly. And then also we'll talk a bit about the windows a bit later. Let's just talk you through the job so far. So what I've done, I didn't want to have to take the, the cover off because it's attached to these timbers that run all around the bottoms and it would have been quite a mission to, to get it off. So I wanted to do it with the cover on, which meant that I couldn't screw from the top down through the metal and into the timber. So I was a little bit worried about how I was going to hold it all in place. And if you're wondering why I didn't explain what I was gonna do before I did it, those who know me well will already know the answer. It's because I generally don't know how I'm going to do something until I do it. I make it up as I go. So for fixing the bottom, I've done something really simple. I just dug a small hole with a hand trowel and I've just forced that down in there nice and deep. It's a good six or eight inches. Now, Upsides, downsides, upsides, simple, really quick, I could get it in. Downsides, it's gonna rot, it will rot. Timber in the ground rots. All those fence posts are busy rotting because they're in the ground, it's what they do. It doesn't matter what type of timber it is. Now this is treated timber, so 
Um, you know, it's going to stand up a little bit better than some, but I needed it done. So I went for that option and I did it fully in the knowledge that it's going to rot. What else could you have done? I could have put a brick there, I could have, you know, built a little tiny concrete pad and put a brick there or something masonry to try and protect it from the damp a little bit. I could have coated it in bitumen. I could have wrapped it in some plastic. These are all things I didn't want to do for various reasons. Now, my plan is super simple. As and when it rots, you know, I don't know how long this is gonna last. I need to replace it, but I suspect this is gonna outlast the cover anyway. So, but if it doesn't, really, really simple. I'm just gonna get a piece of angle iron, just a, an L-shaped, uh, piece of metal basically and I'll just drive that down into the ground and put some screws through and hold it in with that don't think I'll ever have to do that but that's why I'm not too worried about it rotting so that's what I did there and then at the top I just cut it at an angle now again I couldn't fix it to this so I fixed these three together slotted them in and then this I cut these a little bit long so when this went in at an angle and forced up the pressure pushes that against that so that does half the job of keeping it in place. But you've probably noticed this is oversized. It runs out past the ends. Well, that's because I needed it to come past this metal because effectively that's gonna hold it in place. This I fixed to the top so that this now can't move that way. The whole thing is fixed this side of the metal and it can't move this way because the plastic covering is stopping it. So that's all nice and secure now. That's as secure as the rest of the polytunnel. That's going absolutely nowhere. And then you obviously saw me just get the polytunnel cover and pull it in here and then put another piece of timber in front and screw it to it. It's always, always the best way to have clamping a bit of plastic where you want it is to pinch it between two things like a long piece of wood or something. Because if you were to just screw that in there, those screws are just gonna rip, the screw holes will rip, whereas this is clamping the whole thing nice and tight. So there you go. And as I said before, all of this so far has been made with wood that has just been reclaimed from other projects or collected from FreeCycle or lying around. So, so far, the only thing I've spent is probably about 10 pence on some, some of these screws. Next job is make the door. So we're not quite there yet, but um, I've come to a halt because I, I can't find any hinges or that's a bit of a lie. I can find exactly one hinge and uh, it's a bit of a big and a bit too big really for the purpose. So um, I'm going to need to pop off and buy some hinges and I hate doing it because it's the sort of thing I do collect over time. But as it happens, I don't have any at the moment. So all we've really got to do now is come back, offer him up pop some hinges on it and uh, some kind of fastener I think for the other end and put a diagonal brace on the back but again what I'll do is I'll get it finished and then I'll, while it's hung so I've got both my hands I can talk you through exactly what we've done how we've done it and why but I reckon you know the whole job start to finish is going to have taken me about an hour hour and a half at the most one of the things I want to really accentuate though is you guys might see me, depending on your level of skill, you might see me using really nice power tools made by a really nice company. And you might think, well, of course he can do all that stuff. He's a builder. I want to disillusion you of that concern. There's nothing I do that you guys can't do. Absolutely nothing. And don't go thinking that I'm an expert at anything. All I am is someone who's willing to try. So. This, all the things that I do, you can definitely do. You don't even need the power tools. All I've used is a circular saw and a drill. That's literally the only two power tools I've used. And if you don't have them, you can achieve the same results with a hand saw and a screwdriver. It's just gonna take you a little bit longer, that's all. But you can definitely 100% do it.
and that's it we're done so finally we are we're chicken free and uh we've got our polytunnels bag so while i was doing that my wife was making this new run and moving our brahmas that were in the other polytunnel so they're spoiled they don't even want to come outside they're all in that <laughs> in that shed there out the sun we've got some others in that run there so that's great we're all up and running here and she's you've probably seen her popping into the video to uh you know play about with the electric fencing so she's been doing all that and uh our door is finished so i work my way in so really simply i've just put this little angle guy in here this little piece of angle with two holes in it and that's going to be my door catch a bit tricky with one hand but with two hands it's easy so that's how i'm going to open and close the door and then while the door's open we just put the screw back in there i might swap that for a nail or something so you can see in here we've got one diagonal brace whenever you're building a gate you always put a diagonal brace with the bottom on the hinge side and that stops it dropping just holds it all in place it's a bit of a bodge bit ad hoc i had to add at the end this piece of timber because this was just flopping down and leaving a bit of a gap at the top but that's now all covered so you can see i've stretched this out pinned it again everywhere you look sandwiched it between two bits of timber and the only other thing of note really is I've made sure that this bottom brace is a good six or eight inches above the ground look because as I open the door the ground rises but we're done <laughs> polytunnel up and running ready to go and actually probably functionally better than it ever was because that door is going to be so much easier to use than the zip up and roll up one that we had previously so next job on my list and i've enlisted some help so you'll have seen me go to my what we call the tractor shed which is the shed we store the tractor in overnight and where i store most of my bits and bobs and it's just been an absolute mess and there's nothing in there that i know where it is so i've enlisted some help with my new storage container as well i've moved some of the stuff and put that in the storage container and we're now going to have a bit of a spring clean and as i say i've got some help from my children i did a deal with them earlier so that is the next job we're going to basically i'm not going to bore you with it but we're going to just take everything out of here and put it all back so it's nice and tidy so it's now quarter past four in the afternoon so most of the daylight's gone now we've got a couple of hours of it left at most but Ta da everything's tidy away organized and i am very very happy so that's everything i've got to get in there with the exception of the tractor which just sits in the front there's some rubbish in the front there and then down here i've just got some bits that are going to my storage container so god so happy so happy that's a great job done it's uh, as i said it's quarter past four i've got a joint of pork that i'm slow cooking i had to stop for about an hour to record a podcast on gm crops with an expert and that'll be coming out on wednesday but uh yeah other than that it's been pretty full on today i've got quite a bit done i'm really happy so if i can i'm going to go in now finish up cooking dinner or at least get the potatoes on and things and then i'm going to come and finish tidying this up and then what i'd like in an ideal world you're probably used to me saying i'd like to achieve this 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 and this today and then not achieving any of it or maybe one thing but what i'd like to do is get dinner underway again come back out and finish off the tractor shed completely so that there's no bits left outside and then move some compost into my polytunnels if i can get that done i will go to bed feeling that i've achieved a great deal this weekend i'll be very very happy going into the working week tomorrow knowing that i can come home do a little bit in the evenings because there's still so much more i want to do but i i, I will feel like i'm i'm making the progress that i need to be making at this time of year so right now i'm going to get back to cooking dinner and my amazing wife has made a start by the looks of it with the potatoes thank you love she's backing away backing away backing away the camera is kryptonite 
to the women in my house. And there she goes, that, you see her run? And uh, in here, in the slow cooker, we've got some pork. Lots of pork, two joints. I've got a leg joint and a shoulder joint. My plan is I'm gonna serve that with roast potatoes and vegetables this evening, but there's also enough left that I wanna make some pulled pork and make some like Mexican style pulled pork for a dinner in the week. So there you go, I will uh, focus on the food for a bit now and then uh, catch up with you guys when I get back outside. All done, finished, everything gone from out here and everything put away in there. I feel so much happier. What an awesome job. So I've got a load of bits and bobs on the back of the wagon here to just to drop round to different locations. I've got some petrol cans to pop in the car and fill up so we're all ready for the season ahead and just bits and bobs to be dropped elsewhere some recycling some uh, bits for the bonfire but uh, yeah that's pretty much it and then we'll be putting that compost in the polytunnel the other thing is when I was out and about yesterday I passed a sign that said rhubarb plants free to a good home we've already got some rhubarb here but could always use more. There were quite a few plants there, so I didn't feel guilty bagging a couple. So I'm going to try and get these in today as well. Although there's a chance I won't have time to do it today, but if not today, then one evening this week, or ask my wife nicely if she might have time to do it. But uh, yeah, so that's it for this job. We'll get the uh, all these things just drop around. It's lovely having a tractor back that I can just load everything up on the trailer and just scoot around and drop them all where I want them. And then, uh, then we'll put some compost in those polytunnels. There we go. So it feels like I've turned an old polytunnel that was at its end of life into a new polytunnel. And I do feel great about that. I've spread some compost all through here. It's very, you may wonder why I've put it all through the middle when we're gonna be walking up and down the middle. It's very, very thin in the middle and uh, it looks nice. <laughs> very, very thin in the middle, thicker on the edges. But this is, so something's happened here that I'll probably do every year from now on and that is we, we were forced to bring our chickens in here because of the avian influenza restrictions. But I think I'll do that every year. I mean, they've come in here, they'll have taken care of any weeds that would be in here now. Otherwise, you know, they've all gone. They've absolutely pummeled the ground with nitrogen because chicken droppings are, you know, really high in nitrogen. So that's excellent. Now, if they were in here for a really long time, or if we were planting direct into that soil, then I would be a little bit worried because of that high nitrogen level is a bit too high. But we've given whatever plants we bring in here, this lovely three or four inches at least, if not more in places of compost. So they're gonna be started in seed trays. They're gonna start in compost. Then they're gonna have this compost to go through. And then that nitrogen is gonna be a little bit further down. And hopefully by the time they're roots get down that far, the worms will have done their job and got through at least a portion of that and broken it down a little bit. I know it's not the same as having it broken down for a year or more on a compost heap, I'm aware of that, but I'm thinking, I'm hoping that for the amount that's in here, it's just gonna be a nice boost. So yeah, no, super happy. Couple of things to add. So I do still have an issue with these windows. The mesh sort of fly guard part of the windows has just deteriorated. So I am gonna have to do something with that. I'm not sure what yet. And uh, you know, that is one thing that's still holding this polytunnel back insofar as being able to shut it down if we're gonna get a frost or whatever. Um, although saying that, you know, the panels are still there that roll up. So the Velcro is the other thing that I was gonna mention along with those fly screens, the Velcro has basically just stopped working, not for all, but for some of them. So I've got a couple of solutions in mind, none of which I'm really happy with, but over the next few days, I'll settle on something and I'll get that sorted out and I'll share with you what I'm doing. But I've thought about just um, basically fixing a small batten of wood either side of this 
so that it just, when I release this, it just hangs down with the weight. I don't like that mainly because I worry about the wind getting hold of it and, you know, that bit of wood being flapped around and, and piercing the fabric. The other thing is just to get some new Velcro and some new mesh and sew it on. Again, I don't really like that idea. I'm just reluctant to pierce the fabric, even if it is just with a sewing needle. But anyway, there you go. It's uh, hugely different than what it looked like yesterday. And uh, I don't know if you remember, but uh, on Friday when I came out here and stood next to it, the old door was literally held together with string. There was string sewing the two sides together and my wife had to crawl in there to uh, collect the eggs when the hens were in there. But now, I mean, I wish we'd done this when we first bought it, when it was brand new, because having a hinged door is just so much better. So we've not only given an old poly tunnel at really at the end of life, not only have we given it a new lease of life and it's going to go for another season or two, but we've also actually made it better. We've improved it. It's better than it was when it was new from a functional point of view. So brilliant, super happy. And uh, that's going to wrap me up for the day. Maybe tonight, a bit later, I will... Uh, bring my seedlings out from the front room and put them in there. I've already brought out the ones that have germinated. So we've got some seedlings that have already germinated and we've brought them out. We can see them actually, look. They're in one of those small, like plastic greenhouse things that you can see we've got some of our plants already germinating, which is fantastic. And obviously they're out here now where they're gonna get plenty of light because once they've germinated, you know, you don't want them to get leggy by trying to reach up for that light. I explained that in yesterday's video. They're in a dark room, which mine are. So get the rest of them out and I may as well get them all out now. We've got the space, the polytunnel's ready. Um, I think tonight is the last night it's actually going to get quite cold. I think we're expecting a frost tonight, but after tonight, so I'll probably leave it till tomorrow. I'm kind of thinking out loud, you know, and talking to you guys. You're hearing all of these ideas for the first time at the same time I am. <laughs> As they come out my mouth, you and I are both hearing them and thinking them for the first time. So, um, yeah, we'll probably get the seedlings out in there tomorrow and, you know, yet another step in the progression of spring. That'll wrap this one up. Thank you ever so much for watching, guys. And don't forget to press that like button. Please do press that like button. Leave me a comment down below. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and I will speak to you guys soon.